Hey, I uh, hope everybody's doing great. Um, opportunity to review the, the film with the, guy, uh, with the guys today, and, and uh, obviously we just pointed out the, the things that are controllable by us, coaches and players alike, that uh, need to and can be better. Um, and uh, opportunity for us to continue to grow from it. Uh, guys had a great attitude and energy uh, inside the building. Anticipate that. You know we got another road test here in, inside the, the league and, and uh, against a really quality opponent. And looking forward to that opportunity to, to go down to, to Missouri and, and play football. So, um, you know, there are multiple guys that uh, had injuries or, or got nicked up during the course of the ball game the other night. Don't know where those guys are at. Uh, Hendon at quarterback. I'm not sure if he'll be available or not. So we'll see how that transpires here during the course of the week and, and, uh, and go from there. So with that, open it up to some questions. Josh, can you say whether or not Hendon suffered a concussion or if he's in concussion protocol? He is not in concussion protocol currently. So. And, uh, and secondly, just in terms of things that concern you about this team and in performance, where does attrition, roster attrition, rank in there? You want to, I want to make sure that I understand the question here. You're just saying like just, just where we're at numbers wise. Numbers wise and all that. I, I said at the beginning of the year, you know, just pure numbers. We're probably as thin as anybody in the country just based off of pure numbers, guys on, on scholarship. Um, you know, depth for us certainly. Um, you know, something that we're thinking about and trying to continue to develop. Um, young guys got to continue to grow and be ready to play when given the opportunity and, and uh, play at a really high level. So um, the constant development of your roster is something that you're always thinking about, always working on. Um, and uh, obviously recruiting in this cycle will be big for us too. Patrick Dinbid. Coach, with the quarterback situation, how healthy is Joe? Where is he at in his rehab? And does that make, with those two guys sort of banged up, does that make this a big week for Harris? Yeah, J Joe was in a situation where he could play, um, wasn't at a full 100%. Um, you know, during the week we got him some work, uh, not the same type of numbers that he would have gotten uh, if he was 100%. And, and uh, um, so I anticipate just through him playing the other night, didn't, Re-injure or aggravate anything. Continue to think that he'll get, he'll get healthier as this week goes on. When you went back and watched the film, what do you think led to to the drops, and, and what needs to happen in practice to make sure that those drops don't happen again? Um, at the end of the day, you got to go execute uh, on the field, uh, handle the environment, handle the competitive situation, um, throw and catch it. Um, things that we've seen those individuals do uh, at a high level. Um, end of the day, we got to go perform on Saturday and uh, and finish the play. Eric, Yeah, looking ahead to Missouri, a dynamic quarterback, good running back that can also catch the ball out of the backfield. Yeah. What have you seen in them on tape? Yeah, uh, for them offensively, everything kind of goes through that, that running back, uh, whether it's the run game or him being heavily involved in, in, in the pass game. The guy's been dynamic, um, you know, near the top in, in country and, and just, you know, total yards and, and uh, productivity. Uh, really good football player, does a great job, wants the ball in his hands of being electric, making guys miss. Josh, I guess when Cooper May started to get dinged up, maybe his, his level of play wasn't quite the same as it was earlier in the game. Uh, but what did it, did it mean to have him back? And, and in terms of just, just sort of what you learned about him, I mean, the guy's out there, he's got a mashed up hand, his, his legs bothered him, and he's still playing. What's that tell you about a guy? Tough, competitive, cares, uh, cares about you know playing at a really high level, cares about um, the power T, cares about his teammates, wants to be in there. Uh, he's, an, he's a warrior. Um, you know, as the game went on, uh, you watch the film, you can tell that uh, things started to bother him more as, as the game wore on. Um, he didn't want to come out. Uh, he, he competed extremely hard. Yeah, Coach, if Cooper can't go and, and Jerome is in there, what, what's the next <laughs> step for Jerome as a center? Is it more mental than physical? What, what do you need What do you need I, Jerome to do to uh, execute more efficiently up front? Yeah, I think the toughest thing for him is when he's starting at one spot, getting him enough reps at the, at the next spot uh, is 
is difficult to manage and and, uh, and get what you need at both uh, during the course of the week in practice. Uh, at the end of the day, um, you know some of the snaps got to be better. Uh, that's true with Coop in there as well. Uh, there's times where you know there's plays down the football field that we're not able to to connect on. Uh, just simple execution, center quarterback snap, and and uh, so that's quarterback catching it too. But uh, all those pieces got to play in together. Uh, once he's at the the center position. Um, you know, do a great job of communicating. He's done that for the most part during the uh, the first four ball games that he's played some center, um, but uh, need to do it at a higher level. Coach, what are your thoughts on the uh, linebacker group, and kind of how's that compared to where your expectations were at the at the uh, end of fall camp? I, I think the group as a whole, uh, through four ball games, has done some really positive things. Played uh, extremely hard, uh, made plays, been pretty efficient tacklers. Uh, the other night, thought we misfit a couple things on on the second level. Um, you know, we got to continue to play smarter in that group. That, that's during the course of play. It, it's after the whistle too. Um, it's a group that uh, is deeper than where we started uh, at the beginning of uh, a spring ball. Uh, certainly at the beginning of, of training camp, uh, seeing those guys continue to grow uh, at that second level. Here. Look at Missouri uh, defensively, obviously coach really well with a former NFL head coach, but some opportunities there have you seen from film to uh, maybe pick up some chunk plays? Uh, there's been some explosives in, in the run in the past game uh, against them. I think they've gotten better as, as time has gone on the first four weeks, uh, understanding their scheme, fitting things better. Uh, they're a group that has continued to improve. Yes. <laughs> Josh, you guys had the double number situation on special teams. You talked a little bit about it in, in the post game. Uh, how do you avoid that happening in the future? And is a number con number change a consideration for either of those guys you might need? Yeah, uh, for sure. Um, you know, with Theo, uh, he's been our punt safe guy, which is allowed Trey to be on the football field. Unique situation, not being able to see. Need him to be smart in how we communicate that, be able to transition, not just the returner, but then Trey needs to get out of the ball game too. It's one of the things that we talked about, uh, coaches and players together being better uh, to handle that situation the right way. Rob? Surprised that took that long to come up. <laughs> Coach, if Hinton is banged up, is it, is it automatically Joe, or is there any competition there between him and Hinton? I'm not going to speak to, you know, situations that aren't real at this point. So we'll uh, we'll see where we're at during the course of the week and, and go from there. With? Josh, I know that defense gets a lot harder when a quarterback <laughs> gets out of gets outside of the pocket a little bit, gets out there on, on, on the edge. Is there anything y'all can do to to sort of maybe make the damage less when it gets there? Because it's happened a few times this year with, with I guess with Pickett and then obviously with Jones. Once they're out, the numbers advantage is in in their favor, right? And so, as a secondary player, you're caught in a dilemma of continuing to match and cover guys, which you need to do. Other, otherwise, you're going to give up explosive plays. Once he crosses the line of scrimmage, got to do a great job of coming off and and, uh, and making a play. It all starts by not letting them escape the pocket that way, and, and uh, um, you know that can be an edge guy. Uh, it could be a pressure where we're not setting the edge. Uh, it could be, uh, you know, interiorly not having gap control and, and uh, being able to come off and, and uh, play the quarterback. Going for it on fourth down sometimes is a necessity, obviously, a scoring situation. But do you believe in going for fourth down early in games as sort of a tone-setting, aggressive tool? I, I don't know if it's tone-setting. Um, I think each play is the play that makes a difference in a football game. You've got to approach it that way, and, and uh, um, you know, from a philosophical standpoint, I, I do believe in being aggressive. Uh, I believe that uh, you want to put the ball in your players' hands and, and allow them to make plays. Uh, being smart with that, we use analytics at times. Uh, it's not strictly by analytics. There's a, a feel and a flow of the, the football game as well. I know you guys always have grading systems for your players. Who have been some of the more consistent guys that have graded out at a high level at any position on your team so far this year? Uh, there's been a bunch of guys that have graded out um, at, at a high position throughout the, the course of the, the season. Uh, we recognize guys that uh, we call it 640 club members, guys that competed and played the way that we want to from snap to whistle. Uh, we reward guys with game balls. Um, <clears throat> as far as guys that had exceptional uh, grade out uh, scenarios during the course of the week, end of the year, we, we give them a game ball too. 
Yes. Sorry. Sorry about that, Coach. Uh, you talk about in practice how the quarterbacks and wide receivers are on the same page sometimes. What's the disconnect that happens in game-like situations where they're overthrows or drop passes? Yeah, I mean, you're in a live situation, right? It's a competitive environment. It's, you know, it could be pressure inside that, uh, that forces you to maybe not be as accurate. Um, end of the day, you got to be able to throw, catch, and, and manage all of those situations. Josh, how would you evaluate the play of those safeties, those older guys back there, and, and are those young guys getting closer to getting themselves in the mix and helping? Yeah, uh, you saw Christian in there uh, early in the football game. Um, those guys are continuing to develop. They've grown on special teams. They're earning more reps on, on the defensive side of it. Um, I thought early in the football game, uh, defensively, we did a lot of really, really positive things, tackling in space being one of them. Uh, as the game wore on, uh, I didn't think that we tackled as well uh, in those situations. Just with the, the double pass, Pittsburgh was able to execute it, and then Tennessee Tech tried it a couple times last week. Just what's kind of the disconnect there, I guess? Uh, d depends what coverage you're in, right? But uh, an aggressive defense that's going to fly to the football, uh, it's a way for offense to try to counter it. You know? uh, at the end of the day, our third-level players got to see that, recognize and, and pull off. Eric? What have you seen from your tight ends and your running backs and you know, the, uh, <laughs> the run game, the, the run blocking game, as well as you know, pass protection from Tyon Evans? I noticed he picked up a, good, uh, a couple of uh, screamers the other day. I thought our running backs uh, ran their hardest and performed probably their best during the course of, of the season. Uh, the other night, great pad level, uh, did a better job of pressing the line of scrimmage. Still bounced a couple things that I'd like to, to hit more vertical, but uh, I thought they, they ran like a running back should run. Uh, tight ends did a really good job uh, for the most part in, in our run game. Um, that's insertion plays on, on linebackers, it's split zones. Um, thought they, uh, they managed the night pretty well. Back to Rob. Coach, could you, excuse me. <clears throat> could you share any, any of the guys that, that have gotten game balls that you guys have, have, have singled out in four games? I'm, I, I don't have the list in front of me. Um, I'll, uh, I'll bring that with me on Thursday and give you guys an idea on that. Other questions? Tim, in the back. Can you just talk about uh, Javante Payton's play? He's found the end zone last couple of years. Yeah, I said it a week ago. He's continuing to grow in understanding of what we're doing, how we're playing. Um, you know, has the, the one play where he's not set uh, during the course of the play that he can operate and function in, in a better way, cleaner way uh, from, uh, from whistle to the next snap. Um, but he's created some big plays down the football field uh, two weeks ago with a touchdown last week, uh, wide open. Um, he's continuing to grow and, and uh, competing at a really high level. Um, you know, athletically, uh, he fits what we're trying to do, and, and uh, I think you know as we continue down the season, we'll we'll make more and more plays. Finally, being able to hit that deep ball. That yeah, that's one great. positive from the other night, right? Uh, finally, we got somebody behind somebody uh, and actually connected on it. So that that was a positive, huge play in, in the early part of the football game. Adam? Just to follow up on going forward on fourth down, uh, the other day, the other night, you had a third and long. You got half half of it, and then went for it on fourth. Do yeah, you? Yeah, fourth and two. Are you talking about? Uh, are you talking about, no, talking no, about the, the run it in the fourth quarter. Or? I think Peyton got. Or, you had third and long. The the <coughs> drop, Callaway's drop on fourth down. The play before that. Yep. Do you ever have a third down play where you say we're going to go for it on fourth down? Let's just get what we can get here. Do you know you're going for it on fourth down when you're calling third? Absolutely. Um, you're a play ahead, right? And really, more than that. Um, you know, based on some of the analytics, you have an idea where your go would, would be. Um, that doesn't say that you're definitely going to go in that situation, but then you also are able to sequence your plays based on that. That absolutely has happened, um, you know, the other night and, uh, and previously.
speaking of Jimmy Callaway, was there anything you've been able to, to say to him the past couple of days? I know he's a kid that y'all like a lot going forward and just a tough moment in a tough game. Anything you can say to him? Yeah, tough moments for, for multiple guys, right? And, and uh, don't let a moment define you. Uh, as you move forward, you get to define those moments. And uh, so your practice habits and, and how you approach everything that you do, you know, ends up showing up. And, and that's a young guy that, you know, did a lot of really positive things uh, early in training camp. You guys heard me talk about him, you know, missed some time, um, has come back and, and uh, has missed some practices. And, and uh, at the end of the day, when you're on the field, got to play a little bit cleaner. Um, did some really positive things the other night, too. Um, the things that weren't so positive, everybody can see. But, um, you know, continue to come back and be a great competitor and have great practice habits that will lead to a, a successful moment when that moment arises. Anything else for Coach? Thank you. Guys, appreciate it.